electric cars and freezing cold winter weather. They're not great together, are they? Well, you know what? I've come to the Arctic Circle in Sweden to show you how that statement couldn't be further from the truth. Anyone for an ice donut? The bad news first. Electric cars aren't big fans of winter. The cold, wind, they are range thieves. But how much you lose depends on how you drive and what tech your car has. But do expect, as a rule of thumb, around 10 to 30%. But don't panic, because there are some simple ways to claw those miles back. Now, one of the brilliant things about electric cars is the instant power that you get. The power is sent straight from the battery to the motors, which of course turn the wheels, and the power is pretty much there from the get-go. Now, whilst the power is more instantaneous, it's also more controllable, which, it, if you think about it, is exactly what you want in snow and ice. So think, for example, about driving up the icy hill in a petrol or diesel car. You have to manage the accelerator, the brakes, the clutch. There's a lot going on. Of course, an EV doesn't have gears. There's no clutch. And if you use regenerative braking, as I'm doing now, this really controls the power. You can stop and start very easily, and that completely reduces the risk of slipping and sliding about. Unless, of course, you want it to. <laughs> like that. Now the most important part of any electric car is the bit you cannot see. It is the battery, which is under there. Now batteries, I guess a bit like you and me, are working at their best when they are just the right temperature. Not too hot and not too cold. Definitely not in minus 10 like it is today. So if you want to be kind to your battery and get the most out of it, the most important thing that you can do is something called preconditioning. Let me explain. Now most EVs have this and it basically lets you warm the battery in the cabin before you set off. If you do that while the car is still plugged in, you're using your mains power rather than taking it from the battery. How you set it up varies by car on this Polestar. You can do it using the app, which has a climate preset and departure time function, or it will precondition automatically if you add a charging stop in the built-in nav. The second reason why preconditioning is such a good idea is because it makes the cabin lovely and warm before you even set off. Now, if you don't precondition on a cold morning, you're going to be using loads of power from the battery just to get the cabin up to a temperature that stops everyone complaining and keeps you cosy. It's actually really interesting to take a look at where the power is going in your car. And a lot of electric cars will be equipped with a system like this. So just take a look at this. If we go in here straight away, we've got all the information we need about the range and the trip. And you can see orange there is the power that's been used in driving. The, the green, the blue, is the power that's been used through keeping your cabin warm through climate control. And then the yellow is the things like the battery care and the electronics in the car. Um, if you look at this, 70% of the energy has been going on driving, which is pretty good because it is currently minus 10 here at the moment. Preconditioning matters at rapid charges too. In winter, a cold battery charges slowly. So set the charger as your sat-nav destination to warm it up, or preheat manually if your car allows you to do that. Just do give it time, because battery warming can take up to 30 to 40 minutes. Now with petrol or diesel power keeping warm inside, it's dead easy. The engine generates heat, which is piped into the interior. But with electric cars, the batteries and the motor are so efficient, they don't actually generate a lot of heat. Certainly not enough to keep you warm on a cold winter's morning or a day like this. So to generate warmth inside, the heater has to draw charge from the battery, which means there's less charge available to actually drive and go places. So using the climate control is actually a pretty inefficient way of using up your power. It might sound counterintuitive, but you'll use far less power and be more efficient if you heat yourself rather than the empty space around you. So if you haven't been able to preheat the interior or you just wanna keep warm on a journey in the Arctic, for example, what you need to do is actually turn that off. Say goodbye to the climate control and instead 
crank up the heated seats and the heated steering wheel. What a joy. Um, you'll find that even the most affordable electric cars these days tend to have those two functions. And it really does make sense on a cold day to heat yourself and not the cabin around you. And yes, I do know there might be people sitting in the back seat who don't have heated seats, but they can just put another sweater on. That seems fair. A heat pump helps your EV stay warm and uses less battery, which protects your winter range. Studies have shown that in the right conditions, they can boost cold weather range by about 8 to 10 percent. Now, most cars offer them as an option if they're not standard. So if you are clocking up a lot of miles in winter, it's probably worth the extra. Now every car will have different driving modes. They'll all have different names, but essentially they do pretty much the same thing. You'll have a range or eco mode that will help you go further. You'll have normal, which is great for driving around town. And you might have a sports mode or performance mode that really ramps everything up and lets you make the most of the power. Now here in this Polestar, we've got two options. We've got performance, which I am in now, which is great on something like this, an ice track where I want to do a little bit of slipping and sliding around and I want all the power. I want everything all of the time here. Well, not too much of everything. It's really important though that you think about what mode you're in according to your journey. There's absolutely no point having a car in sports or performance mode if you've got a long way to go. You're much better sticking it into range or eco mode because that really allows you to eke out the power from your battery and it could be the difference between you making the journey in one hit or you having to stop and charge. If you're a regular viewer of Electrifying.com, it will not have escaped your notice that we absolutely love regenerative braking. I think it's pretty much the whole team's favourite feature about an electric car. So what it does, if you're new to it, is that it harnesses the power that's usually lost to braking and it feeds it back into the battery, helping with overall efficiency. It also means that you don't have to use the brake pedal as much, so I'm using it now and if I want to stop, I'm just taking my foot off the accelerator and it slows down, then just start it up again. It's a really, really nice feature. But what you may not know is that actually regenerative braking can be brilliant and very helpful if you're driving in snowy or icy conditions like this. Regenerative braking works by turning the electric motor into a generator. So when the car slows down, it harvests energy. All EVs have it, but in cold winter, it's especially useful because it slows the car smoothly and evenly on slippery roads without locking the wheels like heavy braking on the friction brakes can do. Now, this next tip is crucial for winter safety and it helps with your range too. Look well ahead when you're driving. If the traffic ahead starts to break, you'll see it early and you can ease off for a gentle, steady regen brake instead of stamping on the brakes at the last second. Doing this means you'll use less energy, but you'll also drive more safely. Now you've probably got the idea that when it comes to electric cars in winter, it is all about efficiency. But it also pays to think about not just how you're driving, but where you're driving as well. Now, route planning might sound like something that only a Boy Scout would find fascinating, but it's actually something that a lot of electric car drivers swear by. Here's the trick to route planning. Don't just take the first option. You see, most route planners assume you'll want the motorway and you'll sit at 70 miles an hour, but that's not always the most efficient way to travel in an EV. Have a quick look at the alternatives. You'll often find one that doesn't take that much longer, but is shorter or uses slower roads, which can be much kinder on your battery and your range. And look, the motorway is easy though, so don't be scared of it if it's the best route. The real win is with a bit of planning, a smooth driving style and making the most of the car's clever tech to protect your range in any conditions. I guess all that remains to be said is enjoy driving your electric car. They are so much fun, whatever the weather. And if you can get one out into the Arctic on a frozen lake, goodness me, you're just not going to stop smiling. There she goes, there she goes. 
<laughs> so there you go, everything you need to know to look after your electric car in winter. Now all I have to do is look after myself. Ice bath and a sauna? Be rude not to.